Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I just wanted to dive into some of my top studying tips because I know that a few of you that watch my channel are currently in high school, some of you are doing your undergraduate degree, some of you are doing your postgraduate and you're thinking about doing a PhD sometime soon. So I just thought I would speak about my experience with studying and my favourite ways to study uh, just to try and help you all. So in my personal opinion, one of the most important things when it comes to studying is figuring out your study style. You may or may not know that everyone learns in a different way. And for me personally, I actually learn best through writing everything out multiple, multiple times. There are many different ways that people learn best. For example, some people will learn best from listening, whether that is in a lecture or listening back to recordings of a lecture, maybe even listening to podcasts or listening to someone talk on a YouTube video. Other people learn better by reading and for me personally when I read stuff it I find it very very difficult to actually retain the information but if that's the way that it works for you then that's awesome. Other people like me learn best by writing everything out. So during my, well, my high school studies and also during my undergraduate studies, I had notebooks filled with notes. So the notes that I would receive from my teachers or that I would uh, read in textbooks, I would spend hours and hours just writing everything out multiple, multiple times until it stuck in my head. Another way that I learned was actually using visual aids also. So by kind of drawing out schematics, I seem to have quite a photogenic kind of memory where I can memorize, you know, words on paper or I can memorize figures that I've seen. So being a visual learner is also another way that people like to study. There's actually one other way that I found is really useful for my learning. I did used to do this type of learning in the past on my Nintendo DS when I was younger. I used to have this game called Brain Training which was kind of like a interactive learning game where you could train your brain, do maths puzzles and word puzzles. So I found that interactive learning is actually actually really helpful for me also and it might be helpful for you. If interactive learning is something that you're interested in, I actually have a great platform to share with you today. This video has very kindly been sponsored by Brilliant and Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform where you can get access to lots of different interactive activities in order to learn lots of different science-based topics. Brilliant offers a range of different courses at different levels from beginner levels to even advanced so if you're already quite familiar with the topic and there's also loads of different topics to choose from from general science to engineering to data science to programming and even maths also. I've been really enjoying diving into the science-based courses because I found that with my PhD and also in my new job I've kind of gotten a little bit out of touch about general science and like the science of life and the foundations of life which is made up by science so by carrying out these interactive courses I went back to basic and I've actually learned some things that I didn't even learn at university. If you're at the stage of your life where you're studying for exams, maybe in maths, or you're doing some data science courses at university and you just need that little extra helping hand, I honestly think that Brilliant would be such a good tool for you to try out. There are quizzes along the way uh, when you're carrying out the course and there's also these little like interactive puzzles to try and test your knowledge on what you've just learned and it is just genius, honestly. I feel like I have retained information so much better by using Brilliant than I would if I read the same information in a boring textbook. For example, there was this one lesson in the science course where it was telling you about how fast a ball would go if it was hit by a train and it actually had like animations of the train hitting the ball and it was showing how the speed differs depending on your perspective, whether you're on the train or whether you're a pass um, you're a bystander on the platform watching. And just having that visualization honestly helped me to remember the concept so much more. And I can sit here and replay it to you. Whereas if I read it in a textbook, I wouldn't have remembered uh, what I read. <laughs> so brilliant is a brilliant 
see what I did there and easy and free way to learn interactively and I would 100% recommend it to you guys and if you'd like to get started today you can actually sign up for free and if you would like to sign up for an annual plan I can get you 20% off of your annual plan if you use my discount by going to www brilliant.org slash my PhD and me. I hope you enjoy using Brilliant. If we travel back to my undergraduate days, which honestly feels like a lifetime ago now, gosh, how long would it have been since I was doing undergraduate chemistry at the University of Aberdeen. So it's been three and a half years since I started my PhD and then I did my undergraduate master of chemistry degree for five years. So yeah, I guess it was almost nine years ago that I started university, which is a bit crazy. Anyway, back in my undergraduate days, I was a very hard worker and I studied a lot because I wanted to come out of my degree with a first class degree. Naturally, I wanted to get the best grade of degree possible. So how did did I do that? I studied a lot on the run-up to my exams but that's not when my studying began. I attended my lectures and I know that some people don't want to attend lectures or they say that they're just going to listen back their recordings of the lectures later on. You probably won't listen to those recordings until like a week before your exam so I would honestly 100% recommend just going to your lectures or going to them online if you have to but try and tune into them live. If you tune into them live it gives you the opportunity to hear the material for the first time and learn the material for the first time usually a good few months before your exam actually actually takes place which gives you time to then go away and try and understand the content and really learn the content. This gives you time to if you don't understand what's going on to then try and figure out what's going on and there's multiple different ways that you can do that. When I was in my undergraduate degree I was quite lucky that by my third year my class was really small which meant that we had a nice environment a nice small environment with our lecturer where it was quite personal so we all knew each other in the class and no one felt scared to kind of speak up and ask a question even if they thought it was a silly question but no matter what size your class is you have to put your learning first and if you have a burning question that you really don't understand something that the lecturer has told you you just need to speak up and get your question answered. If you really don't want to speak in front of a whole lecture theatre, lecture hall full of people then go and approach the professor directly after the lecture and ask him the question. He might not have time, he or she might not have time to answer it there and then but they might say to you hey drop me an email and ask me your question again I've got to run to another lecture or they might even go that step further and say hey I don't have time just now but why don't you come past my office at 1 p.m we can sit down and I can explain the concept to you we can work through a few examples together. I was super fortunate that I had some lecturers that were genuinely like that they had like an open door policy you could go and knock on the door and sit down and they would talk through some past paper examples with you if you didn't understand them or they would sit and try and you know explain some calculations to me and um, so I'm very very grateful for that but if your lecturers haven't expressed to you that they have an open door policy just try them anyway you know just go and speak to them after class and maybe they will invite you along and sit and explain things to you. So that's very important, making sure you actually understand the content rather than just trying to memorize and learn the content. You will get better marks if you understand the content. Trust me on that one. If you don't want to go and speak to your professors, there are loads of other ways to kind of relearn the information that you've been learning in your lectures. So you can speak to your classmates. Sometimes all it takes is someone explaining things in a slightly different way for them to then click in your head and you go, oh my gosh, I understand it now. Also, there is a plethora of YouTube videos out there explaining scientific concepts and also explaining mathematical calculations. And there's there's loads of stuff out there. Use these tools and just put in the time and the effort to learn the concepts and understand the concepts. So that was something I did during undergraduate. I studied by writing out my notes a lot and I made sure that I understood the content more than a week before my exam. This might sound like a silly one but please start studying long before your exams actually start. I know it can be very easy to just start studying a few days before but you will really quickly realize that it's not enough time and you're suddenly cramming, you're suddenly panicking, you're suddenly frantic thinking I don't have enough time to study for these exams. Please just start studying little and often on the lead 
lead up to the exams and you will thank yourself for it later on that you don't need to pull an all-nighter and drink loads of Red Bull in order to survive your exams. I am really sorry if you can hear the rain on my window. The rain has just started. Hopefully it doesn't get any heavier. But I have these windows which are like fixed into the roof. So when the rain falls, it hits directly on the window and it gets quite loud. So apologies for that. So I've mainly been speaking about experience with high school and undergraduate studies, but these concepts can also be carried over to a postgraduate degree and also to a PhD as well. These methods can also be used when you have a job. So in my job, I am still learning every single day. I have to do kind of self-directed learning. I have to learn things for myself, whether that's through reading papers, whether that's through attending conferences and learning what other people are doing in my research field, whether that is attending webinars um, from instrument experts that are kind of sharing their their tips on how to use instruments or sharing their methods for running on the instrument. I am still learning every single day and honestly you never stop learning throughout the duration of your life. So as long as you have good tools and good tips to help you to learn it will make your learning so much more efficient and so much more successful. I hope you found this video useful today and if you have any ideas for similar types of advice videos please do let me know in the comments section below and don't forget if you're interested in the internet interactive learning platform Brilliant. You can sign up free today and you can get a 20% discount off of an annual plan by visiting www.brilliant.org slash my PhD and me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!